Good afternoon, everyone. This is Melissa with the stock Swish.com, and welcome. Welcome to Apple. I did a preview of this yesterday before the earnings, and lo and behold, Apple did, in fact, gap down on the earnings. So uh, Apple is really, really lower now. Uh, it's one of these things where when I did the preview on the earnings, I said that Apple had to come up and gap up to 600 to correct the chart. Apple had to gap up to here to be back in an uptrend. Apple actually was not in an uptrend. All of this here is nothing, okay? It's just Apple trading. And I know that a lot of people read Apple that it was corrected back in an uptrend, and that was false. That wasn't correct. It's very important to understand how to reprice and trends, and it's not about pivots. If every lower high and higher low and higher high and lower high uh, determined a trend, then people would never get stopped out of trades, and it'd be very easy to trade, actually. And, and, and it's not about the pivots, okay? It's about reading gaps. That's what tells you. Gaps make the trend, set the trend, and change the trend in the chart. So Apple was very close to correction. And when I did the preview video yesterday, I said Apple absolutely without a shadow of a doubt had to get up to 600 yesterday to correct the chart and be back in an uptrend, and it didn't do it. It did not do it. And it had to do it because it was too close to the number not to do it. So the fact that Apple Gap down today is actually tremendously horrific for this stock. I don't know if anybody actually knows that, except for people that read price in the manner that I do, but it is. This is very bad for Apple here today. I know it doesn't seem like it is, but it is, because Apple is confirming today that it is going to hold the downtrend, and that it is not going to do a correction back into an uptrend. Today is the confirmation. The confirmation, if Apple doesn't break 500 today, it will tomorrow. I actually did short this. I'm actually in this short now. This is so late to be in a trade here, but I didn't get this this morning. And then I was wishing I had and wishing I had and wishing I had. And it did a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful five minute here. And I just decided to do it. So first of all, let's just go over it. Let's just go over the whole thing. Here's the five minute. Apple drop down in the morning was great, and I took my eyes off this for a second and missed the trade. Broke the low, but bounced hard and ran up to the absolute last resistance level that it had to hold on from where it opened in the morning, okay, which was 515. You actually could have shorted it at 515. I gave the number in the room at 8 o'clock in the morning that 515 was a resistance. You could have shorted it at 515. So that was the confirmation then. Even though it went over the high of the day, and even though it was late, I said Apple's going to go back down and go red again today. Apple was red here, flipped went green. I said Apple's going to go back down red again today. So here was the short. You didn't need any more confirmation than this because it triggered and you had the number. And the time of the day was good and the gap was great. The gap today in Apple was just tremendously terrific, fantastic, fabulous, 23 points. Then you could have also done this. It was a huge stop. I mean, every stop in this today is huge. Actually, this is probably the best stop this had all day. I guess that's why I decided to do it. Anyways, broke in here, rallied up here. Time of the day to enter trades around lunch is not the best. But many, 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 many times things break in the afternoon. So when Apple ran up here and didn't get over 511 and did a retest here, I mean, this is actually perfect, people. Did not get over 5.11 and did a retest here for the number. I decided to do this. This is the best stop that Apple had all day. And this is a crazy stock to trade when it moves, but it's fun. I got to tell you that. Uh, this is one of these ones where I still think that Apple could break the low today and break $500. But I, I'm out of half the trade because this is just, you know, too much in here. Came down in here. Okay, let's go to the one minute. And the other problem is you can't lower the stock. So, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're in a trade and you can't lower the stock to stay in into the bigger number, you only got two choices. A, take half the trade off. B, take the whole trade off. Or, or, or three, stay with the whole trade. But if you're up too much, it, that doesn't make sense. So, unfortunately, it's one of these things where I want to try to stay through this basically into the close now if I can. And the stop on this can't really be lowered to, to stay through the larger move. And at this point now, if the rest of it uh, trails, it does, because it just can't be lowered. Here's, here's it is on the one minute. It's really, really nice. So this is a nice trade here, okay? And this is what I mean by this is wild. Look at that bar. <laughs> but, you know, it's just one of these things in Apple. 
is how this stock is. Time of the day is good here though, 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock and still breaking. So the first target is the low of the day, which is 502 something. And after that, I mean, it's just until it falls in the close. I mean, this is this is the reason why I'm still in half this trade. I, I, I think this falls and drops right into the close. So let's go over the gap. I did not short Apple when it first broke. And I also didn't take a core trade in Apple or a swing trade in Apple to the downside or anything like that, you know, in, in last year in 2000, well, 2013, yeah. I've got to tell you though, when you get to a point in your trading where you're seeing things and you're, you're trading and your trading is doing very well and you're seeing things before they happen, it helps your confidence a lot. It helps this thing called conviction, something that I talk about just a tremendous amount because it's real. It's not like this make-believe fantasy thing. This idea of having conviction and believing in what you do helps you trade the market successfully because it helps you take risk. And so even if you don't take the, a trade, like I did not take a swing or core trade in Apple. I'm not, I'm not in Apple overnight or anything. I'm in this right now as a day trade, but I'll be flat this before the end of the day. But, you know, seeing this and seeing the bigger picture here play out helps my conviction in what I do as a day trader and eventually at some point to take overnight trades as well because I'm tracking them too. And so all of this is good. You, you, you really, in order to take risks, you have to have confidence and conviction in what you do. And I think it lessens the risk of the trade because you're never going to get around the fact that you're risking money to take a trade. So you have to find a way to um, get around it emotionally, which is having conviction and believing in what you do, which, which I do. I believe highly in what I do. And every time I see it play out, even in calls that are, that are calls that no one else would make, it really, really helps my conviction, which is what happened here in Apple. So the original target that I had in Apple that I announced and did a video on a year ago or last summer, whenever it was, is in play. And Apple is going to continue now to the downside. And the target on Apple, the first target on Apple for an overnight longer term trade is 370, 365, 360, 355, and 350. Apple, without a shot of a doubt, is going to get to 360, 355, 350. I mean, it is now. It's confirming it. So this is a short. It's been a short. It was never not a short ever since it gapped down here and it's been running red. And all of this in here, all this is going on is people now realizing that they don't want to buy back into Apple. So, you know, it's one of these things. There was an article this morning somewhere, Carl, Carl Icahn, somebody put it in the room, was buying more of Apple today. One man alone cannot hold up and support a stock. It's just not possible, at least not a stock like this. So, you know, but Carl Icahn can buy Apple here at 500 400, 300, 600. He can buy it anywhere he wants and, and stick with the trade to a longer term trade until Apple does correct itself. He can be in this trade forever if he wants to, probably. But the fact is that Apple is heading lower next. Right now, today, and, and, and until it corrects itself back in uptrend, which what I'm saying here is important about this gap today is that is it a very significant gap for this chart? It's confirming the downside direction. It's confirming that it is going to go to 360, 355, 350. And Carl Icahn can buy all of it that he wants. But if no one else wants to buy Apple and put Apple back up in an uptrend, it's not going to go there. And when the earnings came out last night, they didn't want to buy it. The powers that be, the power of money people, the people that control the stock did not want to buy Apple. And instead, what happened was they sold out of some more of their long position in it. When the shorting comes into Apple, the large shorting, I don't think it's going to be till probably, you know, under 400 and heavily under 350. And so that's why this is, you know, these are some very significant areas in here because I think shorting could come into Apple, which is not happening right now. More selling came into Apple today at 315. More selling came in here. Some people bought this here, but do you see more sellers took it, took it out and held it down? It's very easy to read price for me. This is what I teach people to do. Read gaps, but you also have to read price. What's happening here with Apple? 
the people in control are who? The people in control are not the bulls, okay? Apple got sold off here. The people in control are not going to let Apple get back over 515 today, okay? Or didn't let it get over 515 this morning, even through the rally, even where it got bought here, do you see? Because more selling pressure came down on Apple here at 515. Right at the number that I said. So there's two more hours left in the day. I'm out of half this train. There's no place else to put the stop. I, I got probably the best entry this now that there was today. I wished I would have got it this morning. I watched it, but I took my off it for one second and missed the trigger, and that's how it is. Apple will close today bearish in this gap. And if it does not break $500 today, it will tomorrow. I wouldn't I would put it past Apple to actually gap down tomorrow, no matter what it does here today. Whether it breaks 500, breaks new low, breaks low of the day, because it's not going to get to the dream target here today, which was 480. So uh, Apple could gap down again tomorrow. I think it does. I think it does, actually. I'm seeing this here. But we'll see where this goes here till the end of the day. I'm really happy I did an afternoon trade here. It's okay to do an afternoon trade once in a blue moon. I don't really like to trade the afternoon, but every once in a while you get a good, get a good trade, you get a good setup, you get a good entry, and then you just feel like you got to do it. And uh, good practice for anyone that traded Apple today because uh, it was one of those gaps that I had so much conviction in, so much conviction, and the overall chart. So I teach people how to read gaps and rate gaps in the Golden Gap class. But in the Trends class, I actually review Apple. I ha I've had it in the class ever since all last year, all, my, all the goings on about Apple. I have all the detailed numbers, everything, the whole thing in the class. And I know that people that did the class are watching this. One of my clients said today's been, ever since I did the class, has been watching Apple to see if it plays out the way I thought. And obviously saw the gap down here today. So it is what it is. This is Melissa with the stops, stockswish.com. If you'd like to take the next Golden Gap class, it's February 8th and 9th. You can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. Apple is down. It's been in a downtrend. Again, this is something that probably no one else but me read it this way, or very few people anyways. Nobody I know. No, nothing I've ever seen out there on the internet. You really have to understand price and gaps. And there are people that do, or there wouldn't be people that make millions and billions of dollars in the market. But I'll say one thing. This was challenging to read it this way. I did a great job doing it. Apple is in a downtrend, has been in a downtrend, has stayed in a downtrend, is in a downtrend, is going to continue in a downtrend, and is going to 360, 355, 350. And if you are still in Apple long and you want to be in it for a long, 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 long time, great. But it's one of these things where if you're up in Apple money, you know, you got to really think about taking possibly some of your profits out. Apple is going to drop big time here. And I don't know the timing of when, okay? But today confirms the downtrend's intact and staying there. And that Apple is not going to go back into an uptrend here anytime soon. And I actually don't think it's going to this whole year now. Because this gap today was really, really bad. So it's very important to learn how to read gaps. I don't think anybody that trades the market should not know how to read gaps. I think if you trade in the live market, you need to understand gaps and know how to read them. Whether you trade them or not as a day trade or a swing trade or core trade is up to you. But if you don't understand how to read gaps, you don't know how to read this right here today. And you might have tried to buy it. You might be buying it now. You might think this is a buy here. And you might think it's the best buy in the world or some kind of cheap buy, but it's not. It's a short. It's as short as a day trade. It's as short as a swing trade. It's a confirmation of a short as an overnight trade, too. And Apple's in a downtrend. So you don't buy stuff that's in a downtrend. Okay? Really, really something here. So we'll see where this goes today and what it does tomorrow. This is Melissa with the stockswish.com. If you'd like more information, email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.